Aislin Ullman. I don't know if I'm supposed to look at the camera or not, but... <laughs> you can. It's, <laughs> okay, it's sweet. <laughs> Welcome to the show. Thank you. Um, this is, You're a very special guest because you're coming Thanks. all the way from, from Lander, Wyoming. Yeah, just just to be on this podcast. Exclusively to yep, be on this that podcast. That is all. Yeah, That's yeah, the yeah. only reason I'm here. <laughs> um, so we're going to play Jenga today. Um, classic Jenga, actually, as opposed to those fancy new... What are the fancy new ones? I have no idea. Okay, I did play one... a Jenga drinking game one time, and that's like, maybe I shouldn't say that, but. <laughs> <laughs> Not the best for anyone who's um, considering going to yeah. the, the college. <laughs> um, I don't think this has the little stacker thing. Oh, gosh. So we have to like stack it by hand. Yes. From, um, from the get-go. Yeah. So you are, you have a very special role. Um, what is that role? Yeah, so I am an admissions counselor and peak program director. Um, admissions counselor essentially just looks like I'm recruiting people to the college. Um, I graduated from WCC in 2021, loved what it had to offer, and so wanted to share that with others. Groovy. Yeah. yeah. And and for the uninitiated, what's the elevator pitch for WCC? Okay. All right. It changes every time I give it. So <laughs> it depends on what I'm feeling, what I'm thinking about. But uh -huh. I think that's good because then it, it comes off as more genuine. But the thing that I most commonly tell people is that Wyoming Catholic College focuses on an education of the whole person. Mm -hmm. So mind, body, and soul. You're going to get a bachelor's degree in liberal arts. Um, so academics are super important, but it's just that we don't want to focus on that as the only aspect mm -hmm. because you are a whole human being. What? And so, Sorry yeah, yeah, no kidding. <laughs> um, and so we give you an education for your body and your soul as well. And the way that we do that is first, rigorous academics, liberal arts, great books is what we focus on. So all of the greatest things that have been thought and written in Western civilization. Um, secondarily, we have an outdoor program mm -hmm. with a lot of relation to and integration with the um, the academics. So you start off with a 21 day backpacking trip, which you're gonna be doing this fall. So excited. Yeah, <laughs> I'm excited for you, it's, it's amazing. Um, and then um, finally, the spiritual life, which is like the source and summit of everything that we do. Mm -hmm. um, and we are a faithfully Catholic college, two full-time chaplains. Um, so yeah, that, that's kind of my elevator pitch. And it, it would look different if I was giving that as more of a presentation as yeah, opposed yeah, to like yeah. a conversational thing. But mm -hmm. that's, yeah, that's my elevator pitch. Awesome. What is, what is one of all the stories you're allowed to say on this <laughs> what is your favorite yeah. like moment from your your oh. time as a student yeah gosh there's a lot okay so one that's particularly unique to my time at wcc is junior year like most other people in the country we got sent home because of covid mm. Um, so that was second semester of my junior year and that sucked. Yeah. So we spent, um, the second half of second semester junior year at home. And then when we came back in the fall for my senior year, we, um, had to do finals week online. Ooh, that's rough. Yeah. So we got sent home for Thanksgiving and it was like, you're not coming back until spring semester. Mm -hmm. Um, so my class, instead of just going off to our separate houses, we actually went to Louisiana where one of my friends lived. Wow. There were like 26 of us. So that was <laughs> actually about half of our class. Uh -huh. um, and we just spent three weeks straight in Louisiana on this gorgeous property with tons of like pecan trees and chickens. Dang. And we just lived together for three weeks in this huge house and did all of our homework there. That sounds amazing. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it was like, it was just an epitome of like, it was, it was a way that I saw Wyoming Catholic College come out of the context that it's mm -hmm. usually in. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and it was just my class living out the spirit of what Wyoming Catholic College is trying to give you, which is like a beautiful community life and knowing how to pursue the good life uh -huh. and understanding what that means. What What's something that, that a lot of people going in don't really have any idea about mm -hmm. and then they're just like really surprised when they show up? That's a good question. Um, I think that sometimes the workload can mm. catch people off guard mm -hmm. because 
in some ways it's hard as an admissions team to kind of convey like because the unique thing about us is that we have an outdoor program like that's the thing that really catches people's attention Mm -hmm. um so it's hard to also emphasize but hey there's a lot of homework and (laughs) hey this is also an academic institution Uh um and so sometimes trying to balance out those those three aspects of the school can be hard Mm -hmm. and it's it's a lot of work um, and so I think sometimes it does surprise people, like how much how much work that actually is. Mm. Mm-hmm. Interesting. What was what was like the favorite your favorite book that you read at your time? Oh, okay. I different subjects are you know there's like a gazillion different things that you study at mm-hmm. Wyoming Catholic, um, but probably either Brothers Karamazov by Dostoevsky mm. um, or Madame Bovary by Gustave Flaubert and those are both novels modern Uh novels which is really funny that those are like my favorite Mm -hmm. um but yeah one of those two I don't think I could pick one interesting (laughs) you know I um I I don't now but I used to work at Express which is a clothing store Mm -hmm. um and I would fold clothes a bunch and they they wouldn't let you wear headphones but I um it was cold so I would wear a beanie and then put my earbud in <laughs> one earbud in yeah. during it and I got really bored of listening to other podcasts so I would mm-hmm. listen I started listening to Jordan Peterson's biblical series on Yeah, I've heard about it. I haven't listened to it myself. Yeah, but... it's I, I I wrote an essay and I mentioned it in the essay, but it's it should be called Jordan Peterson's Tangents with brief references <laughs> to the biblical stories, like because most of the time, because because he said on on a podcast that he doesn't um he doesn't like go into a lecture with like a speech or anything. He mm-hmm. just has a couple questions and then just figures it out. Lets it go where it will. Yeah, yeah. So it's really interesting. Like he brought up stuff that because he's a psychologist so he brought up yeah. a lot of psychological stuff and the themes and the these stories and i just it blew my mind mm-hmm. and he really loves dostoevsky and um and what's the other one those the i can't remember his name but he's another Is it another russian philo- author he was a philosopher um solzhenitsyn no it was a short name it's like you, you're you're reaching back. I, there's your... tons of philosophers. I could say Hume. I could say um, Jung. Jung. Carl. Carl, Carl Jung. Jung. Yeah, 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 yeah. He was kind of one of the first psychologists. Mm, mm-hmm. That that makes sense then. Yeah. yeah. Um, but the the way he talked about um, dreams and and how people scientists think that that dreams are like just random firings in your mm. brain, but it, it's it's more of your subconscious trying to take find these these themes and figure it out and just yell it at your your conscious and i i found that just incredible so yeah i mean and that's a huge that's a huge theme in um crime and punishment Mm. have you read crime and punishment Mm. okay there's you will going to i catholic you're (laughs) junior year (laughs) um but yeah not to give anything away but dreams come up over and over again Mm. in in crime and punishment it's very much a, a literary um device but also it is intended to kind of show the psychological state of Mm -hmm. raskonikov who's the main character um yeah so did you have a whole day in class where you're just like all right guys let's figure out how to say these names at the beginning yeah actually Uh or well maybe it wasn't i don't think it was like a whole dedicated day Mm -hmm. but it would be really funny watching people (laughs) kind of mispronounce everything and just you know slur out something that sounds vaguely russian Mm -hmm. um and usually I would be the one to stop and be like, okay, how do we actually pronounce this? <laughs> like, I don't think we're doing it right. Uh-huh. <laughs> um, so at the start, you mentioned this earlier, at the start of your freshman year at WCC, at Wyoming Catholic, um, mm-hmm. they go on a 21-day backpacking trip yeah. in the woods. Yeah. Um, and I'm excited to go because I'll turn 18 in the woods. Mm-hmm. Um, so a very manly way to become an adult. That's like um, That's going to be your... Uh, what are the, like right of initiation yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> like kill a deer and smear the blood on yeah my face. exactly yeah yeah <laughs> um but what what is it like do do the people at frasadi like wear masks when when the the people come in after no 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 <laughs> everyone does smell really bad but yeah. uh no <laughs> no they don't it's you kind of get it's kind of like when you 
I don't know. You've probably had the experience of like going into a place and being like, oh my gosh, it does not smell good in here. Mm-hmm. And then after like 10 minutes, you don't even notice. Oh, I think yeah, it's kind yeah, of that yeah. effect. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And you, you start to not notice that you smell while you're out there. <laughs> yeah, I, w- I would assume. <laughs> yeah. Um, I, I was when I was talking to mom about it, I um, I mentioned how the same thing happens at the the space station, the ISS, oh. like because they, you don't take showers in space. Because the water just turns into a I guess that a, makes sense. I had never thought of that, but that makes sense. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I'm I, really good at taking random things that you, nobody else thinks about and putting them together. You're going to be perfect at Wyoming Catholic. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> I, I am really curious about how I'll... Because that's, that's one of my worries is mm-hmm. like... Because I, I, I hate school. Okay. Yep. Good <laughs> and, to know. Um, and the reason I'm going to college, because for the longest time I would be like, I'm... I'm not going to college. Yeah. Like that is that is not something I get. I get time in this institution and then I'm done. Yeah, yeah. But then mm-hmm. um, Haley like talked to me about it and mm-hmm. she just started checking off all these boxes and it was it was insane. Yeah. And um and so I am I am. It's so weird because I'm going to a completely different place yes. with completely different people on a yep. side of the country that I've been to once and that was at (laughs) At lander yeah yeah. (laughs) so i am completely going in blind Mm -hmm. like and i'm absolutely terrified slightly yeah that completely makes sense (laughs) were you you lived in the the east the west coast yes so yeah i i lived in new mexico most of my life um but i was not remotely prepared for what wyoming catholic was going to be really no what what shocked you well, okay, so first of all, I had never been camping um, before Ooh, I went to WCC. That's rough. Like, and, okay, so there was one time that was kind of sort of camping, but it was literally like we slept in a tent under a gazebo and then drove <laughs> to like McDonald's the next day. Uh-huh. It was not camping. Uh-huh. Um, and I very distinctly remember we drove to the trailhead on this yellow bus. Uh-huh. And I was sitting in a bus seat just thinking to myself, um basically like what am i doing (laughs) how did i get here i'm gonna be it like i don't think that my mind had actually been able to fathom what living in the backcountry for three weeks meant Mm -hmm. and then i started getting all these classes and my instructors started kind of telling me what it was going to be like Mm -hmm. and um i was like oh wow this is different than i than i expected it to be (laughs) so i was terrified and to be honest the first week and a half was rough Mm -hmm. very very rough um so that that was really surprising to me and as far as the classes go i i've honestly i have always loved school so i can't i can't tell you that i've been in your position Uh um so that was less of a surprise to me yeah i one thing I was shocked by when mm-hmm. I when I went to Lander was how heat works there. Like, <laughs> like here, it doesn't matter because because I would I would see in movies where people would be in the desert and they would put on more clothes and I would be like, yep. that will just make you more hot. Yeah, I don't you'll understand. Just be covered in your own sweat yeah, instead of it exactly. evaporating. And so I go to Lander and I I just remember like being in the in the woods because like the hiking trip in mm-hmm. at peak and i was like oh i'm hot let me put on a long sleeve shirt yeah and i was like this is so alien to me yeah, yeah. <laughs> like how how the sun just stops when yep. you put on more layers yeah like that was weird yeah and then when i came back when i left the atlanta airport i just went ew because <laughs> it went from yeah. normal to just humidity it yeah was, it was rough yeah and i grew up in houston texas actually mm-hmm. so like i spent the first 11 years of my life in houston and so i understand that feeling where it's just like you're like swimming through heat uh-huh. is the sensation that you have um so yeah i get that and then you go to the desert or the high desert and you're like oh my gosh the the shade is actually like a respite from the heat i'm yeah. not just surrounded it's by incredible heat yeah and wet all the time <laughs> yeah what's do you get ever frustrated like when you were a student would you get mm-hmm. ever frustrated by how middle of nowhere lander was because hmm. because i like to say like when somebody says oh where is it it's in the middle of nowhere middle of nowhere yeah like, i mean that is true yeah it's really funny actually one time a student visited and they were like i thought this was going to be on a ranch and i was like <laughs> no we are actually in a town like we're not <laughs> that middle of nowhere but you're right i mean like the the accessibility to like airports and like the fact that we don't even have a Walmart is kind of indicative of how small town it is. Uh-huh. Um, 
if anything yes sometimes it is frustrating when Mm -hmm. you can't like you know go see your family on the weekend because there is no major airport Uh that's a little frustrating it's a little bit of a bummer um but it also adds to the the kind of feeling of stepping away from the world for a bit Mm. um i wouldn't want to call it a bubble because i don't think it is i think if anything you're encountering reality in a more distinct way than uh-huh. you do in other um, at other institutions. Um, so yes, frustrating, but also is a fairly easy sacrifice for four years yeah. to get the experience that you do. Yeah, I that that's one of the things that I'm really excited for, especially mm-hmm. with the no phones policy. Yeah, is I I have realized over the past few months how ridiculous, like how purposeless it is yeah. how it's just this cycle of information that nobody wants to get out of and it's yes. just meaningless it's just constant stimulation yeah to keep and, you from being bored and i haven't really thought of lander as another level to that freedom of mm-hmm. just seclusion yeah but that's that's really interesting to me how how yeah <laughs> yeah no that's it's and honestly like some of the answers that i'm gonna give you today i've probably thought of for the first time Really? Some people ask me questions like this, but also that one of the things we do at WCC is just have conversations uh-huh. and that's how you come to get answers. Yeah. That's another thing that was a big selling point because I love yes. asking deep questions yeah. mm-hmm. and and getting deep answers. Yep. And so I, I cannot wait for that to, to mm-hmm. have that be a part of just normal life. Yeah. And it keeps going. Like after you graduate, mm. you just like to have conversations and you can like bring other people into it. Mm-hmm. And it's awesome. How do you think if you had gone to someplace more in society, yeah. how do you think you would have changed as opposed mm. to the way you've changed at WCC? Honestly, I think for me personally, one of the one of the things that wouldn't have happened is I wouldn't have grown into my love of people. I'm going to go check the camera. You keep talking. Great. Um, because my, I was, I always kind of like, if I want to use the phrase self-identified, I don't know that I do want to use that phrase, but um, I was, I always felt like an introvert and I kind of was always like, oh, I'm just introverted. I'm just introverted. Mm-hmm. Um, however, once I started having friends, I was like, I'm not introverted. I just need to have the right people. <laughs> um and I am still introverted, but mm-hmm. like I, I realize that I am, I need people more than I think I do. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think a lot of people are like that, particularly homeschoolers. Yeah. Um, so I think I would have gotten, I would have been forgotten and lost in the vast number of people mm-hmm. that go to larger institutions and would have stayed way more inside of myself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But at Wyoming Catholic, you can't stay inside of yourself mm-hmm. and, and be happy. Um, Haley told me that like by the end of your first year, you, you get to know every single person at least in your class i can't remember she said the class the whole school on like a first date basis yeah how how does that happen okay i mean it happens in like a layer of ways because first of all you're thrust into the wilderness with 10 to 13 other people you don't know Mm. you get very close in the wilderness um I, i can imagine honestly i would say at least half of we call them wickles Wyoming Catholic College Leadership Expedition. <laughs> um, I don't. It, it's a really long. There are so many acronyms at WCC. It's kind of ridiculous. But Wickles. Um, so in my Wickle, I would say probably at least half of them, I would still consider my very good friends, mm. and a couple of them are still some of my best friends. Um, so that's one way you just get thrust into the wilderness with a bunch of people of the same gender, um, and then you get thrust into a class group with like. 20 ish people mm-hmm. and so then you get to know those people and those are different genders different people than they were in your wickle and then you have a dorm which is another oh, conglomeration yeah, yeah, of yeah, different yeah. people um and then you have different like class all class activities so you'll get to know your whole class through like planning your first dance so mm-hmm. you get to put on a dance your freshman year oh, with your whole class that's awesome and it's themed whatever uh-huh. theme you guys pick um so there's just kind of a variety of ways. And then on the other outdoor trips, if you decide to go on those, there's class mixture. And so they're mm-hmm. not just dedicated to like just freshmen or just sophomores or anything like that. It's like everyone. Mm-hmm. So there's just all this multitude of ways that everyone's mixing and mingling together constantly. Did you get any peer pressure to do uh, like, were, were there any outdoor trips where you were like, I'm never doing that. And then everybody was like, come on, come on, Eastland. 
Okay, actually, so it wasn't an outdoor <laughs> trip. It was intramural sports. Um, <laughs> Interesting. So I didn't think I was a sporty person for most of my life. There's a lot of things that WCC showed me that are, were not true about myself that I assumed were true. Mm-hmm. Um, so senior year, you do this thing called, I don't know if you still do it anymore, but when I was a senior, you do the um, the EDGE project. And it's essentially you have to do something at Wyoming Catholic before you leave that makes you uncomfortable. (laughs) Not like we don't already do enough of Uh that, but it was like, all right, there's probably something at this school that you have not, you know, dove into. Mm -hmm. Do it. Um, So I had never played intramural sports, like ever, like volleyball, softball, whatever. Mm -hmm. Um, And so I finally did volleyball my senior year. (laughs) Did you hate it? No, I actually really, really liked it. And I was wow. decently good at it uh-huh. for having never done it. Yeah. <laughs> Interesting. I, I'm not a sporty person either. I like every okay. every year at the Super Bowl, I'm just like when the game is actually going on, I'm like, can we see the, <laughs> where's the Coca-Cola commercial? That yeah, yeah. Really halftime show. That's why yeah, I'm here. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, no, not even the halftime show. Cause it's, I didn't see it this year. It was, um, have you ever played Super Smash Bros? Mm-hmm. So imagine like the Super Smash Bros arena where where there are like those different floating islands yep but then there are a bunch of people like dancers dancing in white uh costumes on like all the <laughs> all the platforms and then um rihanna is standing in the <laughs> Just, middle she's like kirby in the center <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's it's crazy like i've seen people overlay that oh that kind gosh, of footage that's so funny it's, it was really funny yeah i ended up i was out of town for the super bowl and then like rolled in during the last quarter and watched uh-huh. the the chiefs win but i don't usually watch the super bowl mm. do you yeah. know how football works yes i know enough i think there are definitely some details that someone would be like this thing and i'd be like i don't know what that means <laughs> but i know that you like uh-huh. score touchdowns and in order to get the is it an additional point i have no idea oh okay <laughs> I, I know apparently more than you then uh-huh. yeah, yeah yeah i m- like my family does not like my dad doesn't care at all about anything, but he grew up in the South and my mom grew up in the South. So yeah. like it happens, but we're so disc like my f- parents getting together created such a Northern place in the Southern <laughs> environment that like Ben, my older brother, Ben used to have an accent. Yeah. Like in, in old home movies, he would be like, Sam, look what you got for Christmas. <laughs> but, but somehow we just didn't end up with accents so That's we hilarious. we grew up in this small town called swainsboro where mm-hmm. everyone else had an accent yeah and we were just weird people who That's had so zero funny. i know people like that actually one of my good friends um he grew up in north carolina and uh doesn't really have an accent but uh-huh. his parents do interesting well granted his dad was from i think like pittsburgh or uh-huh. something but his mom had an accent and so it was always weird to me that yeah that he didn't apparently we say water weird water. or or ben ben does i i have people started saying that to ben so i was like oh i gotta switch it up to water but <laughs> Wait, how did you say it before though water what water yeah that's weird yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah um but no, we, I have no idea how football works. Like, I understand you got to get to this side. You got to get to this side yeah. when you throw the ball really far. Good. <laughs> but <laughs> that's, that's pretty much it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's less than I understand. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, apparently the, the NFL rule book is like the size of a Stephen King novel. Oh my gosh. It's, that does not surprise it's me. It's ridiculous. Actually. Yeah. I'm like, people had too much time on their hands to, to make this this thing it's very it seems very convoluted like they just start Mm -hmm. adding things and they're like oh but if you do it this way then this is not (laughs) the case you know just like these weird weird i mean it is completely made up yeah if we're being honest yeah (laughs) have you seen fantastic mr fox yes i have it's like uh uh oh what is the name hot box hot box yeah Yeah. (laughs) divide that by nine please (laughs) That's a great parody of American sports. Yes, I think. it's incredible. <laughs> yeah, when he's trying to explain it, and then it just like the whole like even the diagram gets so complicated <laughs> with the arrows. Yeah, how how disconnected are you from pop culture in at WCC? Okay, I think that completely depends on the individual mm. because you still have your computer, and so you can still be, you know, watching youtube Mm -hmm. and you can still be catching up on news and keeping up with trends on instagram if you really wanted to um 
but you'd kind of have to prioritize it. Mm-hmm. So I don't know. It's really mixed. Like things still leak into WCC and we'll still end up saying like weird phrases that other people do. Uh-huh. But usually like a couple years behind everyone else. <laughs> like I feel like we were using the phrases, the, the words fam and yeet way longer than we should have been uh-huh. at WCC. Uh-huh. <laughs> like there are still people dabbing. In that yep. Dump. Unfortunately so. Wow. That's, um, <laughs> that's interesting. Yeah. Um, I'm excited for that. My my dad finds it hilarious when I when I say things in a very sort of ghetto accent. Mm-hmm. Like um, if I just go like Maisky, like he will start dying laughing. <laughs> really? Yeah, and it's like it doesn't it doesn't matter. Like if I if I come up with another phrase that's just like vaguely that sort of thing, <laughs> yeah. he'll just he'll crack up. Like um, there's a scene from Black Panther mm-hmm. where um, where uh, Killmonger's character is like he's the bad guy. If you if you haven't seen it, I have not actually seen Black Panther. Oh, I've it, seen it's pretty good. It's 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 pretty solid. I've seen the wait. No, I have seen Black Panther, but it was a long time ago. What so were you I haven't seen. Of? I was thinking of Wakanda Forever, the oh, new the newer one. Have not seen not, that. That's not worth it. Okay, it's not as good. Good to know. <laughs> um, <laughs> but there's a scene where he's like talking to this museum person. Mm-hmm. But what somebody did, and that's like a it's a normal movie scene, but. I saw this video of people recreating it. Yeah. And I showed it to my dad. And so and so um Killmonger, the the bad guy, he's like staring at a painting or or a I don't know, some tribal like weapon or something. Yeah. And it's it's made out of vibranium. Mm-hmm. But they don't know that because yeah. yeah. Um and it's so horrible. and so the this girl, this curator or whatever, comes up to him and he goes, um, He's like, where's this from? And she goes, it's from, he goes, nah, it's from Wakanda. <laughs> and it's made out of a brainium. But don't even trip. I'm going to take it off your hands for you. Oh, gosh. And she goes. Did your dad just totally lose it? Oh, yeah. Like, like <laughs> we will say, um, <laughs> like, we'll say, what's that from? And he goes, or, or somebody will go, nah, it's from Wakanda. <laughs> and we are back from break. Um, now we can actually play Jenga. Exactly. It, that's usually how it goes i've found um there's a lot of things that i i've realized um but one thing is um people really want to switch it up halfway through and, that makes sense yeah, yeah yeah um like i played minecraft with my dad mm-hmm. because um why not yeah um and he he was like all right let's 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 stop now let's, <laughs> let's switch it up yeah yeah um, that's totally fair so do you want to go first yeah i'll go first Good start. Good start. I I always got to do the tap method. (laughs) (laughs) I want to be like one of those, not as a job or anything, but to know um, how to be like a voice commentary commentator person on like a sporting event. Oh, yeah. Like just to do it for fun. Um, I'm really good at doing a voice. We got to put them back on top. Oh, yeah, that's true. I forgot about that. Um, Of a a wildlife expert like yeah the wild eastland in her natural habitat <laughs> currently playing jenga oh. in a place she's never been there is a fantastic um video that me and my classmates made my freshman year from field science that is um essentially one of our classmates doing that where he's like commentating <laughs> on our field science stuff uh-huh. and talking about this like ridiculous completely made up like the elk and like the the icy river and it's just <laughs> it's so dumb and there's like legitimately stranger things music like at the beginning of it it's totally ridiculous how does did you do the the editing for that or no i just was like interviewed in it because mm. <laughs> i was in the field science class uh-huh what's mm. uh i obviously there's no video program but you do videos because I, I saw mm-hmm. some Latin song that somebody did on the... Oh, my the, gosh. Uh, it was, like, from a, lo- a long time ago. Probably from, like, 2011. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 But, I, we have, like, a YouTube channel, and there are videographer work-study students, actually. Oh. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, so we, they'll, like, be provided with different... Um, like, like mics and, and how recording. Do you, how do you apply to that? You just gotta... You gotta know people. Okay. Yeah. Like, for instance... Joseph Suzanka. Talk to Joseph Suzanka. Okay. <laughs> oh, here we go. 
how how um how big do you think this episode's going to be as far as WCC culture goes? Like, is it gonna is it gonna spread through the ranks? I don't know. It's actually Ooh. hard to say. I I mean, I intend to share it with people. Uh huh. Um, and I bet we will share it on um our our social media. So mm. I don't actually know. Wow, we've we've done a really good job of like poking all the middles <laughs> out. No, it's so, gonna get just ridiculously hard from yeah, this point forward. Yeah, yeah. Um, the only issue I I started this and I'm like every week we're gonna we're gonna do some some new yeah um some uh, activity mm -hmm. and um and now it's it's not very good for podcasting because then you stop talking yeah you gotta like to lean around it and yeah <laughs> um like i played chess with ben and we both did just an awful job because because we weren't yeah because you got to think about what you're gonna do yeah with jenga at least it's a little more mindless yeah, yeah you know you just pull, bo pull wow, blocks wow you really went for all the middle ones mm -hmm. oh gosh and in that video i was like um I would do a top-down view, but we have 11 subscribers, and so I don't think anyone <laughs> would care. But then somebody commented, like, Father, I think it was a priest, Father something. That's so he, funny. He commented saying, I wanted a top-down view. <laughs> like, dang it, I can't win. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, it's really interesting the way... Ooh, that's scary. You just lose this real fast. It's either focus on what we're talking about or focus on Jenga, and I don't that, know if we can do both. <laughs> yeah. Um, it's really interesting the size of the Catholic media community mm -hmm. or just, like, Catholic community in general. Like, yeah. take Jordan Peterson, for, for instance. Like, um, I, I, don't, I don't know Jordan Peterson. Yeah. But I know my dad, and my mm -hmm. dad knows Matt Frad, and Matt Frad... Knows Jordan Peterson? My... my Matt Frad knows Jonathan Peugeot, and Jonathan Peugeot is good friends with Jordan Peterson. Oh, so you're just gonna? Are you gonna like work up? The I'm ranks? gonna. I'm gonna work my way. So you up. need yeah, to. Yeah. You need to interview Matt Frad. I or really be do. Interviewed by Matt Frad. That might be harder. Yeah, I don't know, I'd have to get a lot of, a lot of. I I should just get a bunch of money and fly down to Steubenville. Just show and be up. Like, <laughs> hey, <laughs> yeah. can you interview me? <laughs> just real quick, just like five <laughs> minutes, please. Um, during. Actually, after that, um, or before that concert that I went to, the Claire Rosencrantz one, yeah, um, mm -hmm. I I DM'd her on Instagram. Really? Obviously, like I knew it wasn't gonna go anywhere. Yeah, yeah. This is so. <gasps> Boom. Oh my gosh. Um, but I was like, hey, I'm coming to your show. Um, if you want to do a, a a interview like before or or after or during, that would be yeah. kind of difficult. <laughs> but you know, um, and she never responded. I, when I was 16, this is literally the only reason I got a Twitter account and I haven't used it for anything else <laughs> besides, this is like, this is the first time I feel like I'm saying this to any individual. Um, I, I tweeted Tom Hiddleston and was like, <laughs> come to my 16th birthday party. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing happened, but I, I have that too. Uh -huh. That's just in my memories. Just this wow. random moment in my life. <laughs> you know, um, that's funny. So you were a Loki fan when you were younger? Oh, yes. Oh, my gosh. I totally was. He was your, your celebrity crush? Mm-hmm. Yeah. In addition to Benedict Cumberbatch. Really? Yeah, because, oh, gosh, Sherlock is just fantastic. Is it still your turn? Am it I is trying still my to turn. I'm just desperately trying to taking not. Taking your sweet time. <laughs> uh, uh... This might be going down. Have you watched Sherlock? Yeah, yeah, all four seasons. That's really good. I, I wasn't a huge fan mm. of the the spoiler plot. The plot the, where if I said anything, it would spoil the show, and I don't want to do that to our season audience. Season four but, specifically? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I have, I have mixed feelings about it. I get, really, I get really excited for things that other people are excited about. So, Interesting. So when there was the hype around oh sherlock season four i was like this is great uh-huh oh my gosh um but now oh, now in hindsight i'm i'm less certain about how i feel about the the plot and and everything so i feel like i'd have to go and watch it again to mm -hmm. kind of like actually because i haven't watched that since i was i don't even know how old i'm so disappointed at the marvel movies 
like I used to love them like because, yeah they were, they, were great. they were so good like the especially the Captain America movies the themes in that were just yeah. incredible it was so fun it was such a good family are can we use two hands <laughs> I'm gonna say no all right all right here we go this might be it <gasps> oh my gosh it's I'm gonna move just, the just take your time it's it's all about patience <laughs> patience is a virtue maybe we're gonna go the other way yeah that's better Dang it. Oh, this might be really hard for you. Yeah. <laughs> Emotionally. <laughs> how how is like I talked to Haley a little bit about the movie theater at at in Wyoming. Yeah. Cuz um cuz I I had a, a an argument with my mom. Not really an argument. It was a it was just a heated discussion about something. We we were both sort of on the same side. Yeah. But actually I'm going to put this over here. That's a good idea. Um, but about how I, instead of doing the work studies program at WCC, I would have rather just like had a job in Lander yeah, and, yeah. um, like take like most of the paycheck to tuition. But, mm -hmm. um, he was, dad was like, um, well, you don't know what, when, what's like, what place is hiring? And I was like, the movie theater is hiring. <laughs> Because at peak, I saw that it was hiring. And I'm yeah, like, they are frequently hiring too, actually. I don't know if they've just got a high turnover for Or there for was just school. a murderer who, who works there. You know, Lander actually has very little violent crime. That you know of. Fair. <laughs> Fair. There could be something underground going on. Is there an underground fight club? If you say no, people will... People know the truth in your eyes. They'll still see it. WCCers just actually fight each other. There's just actually like <laughs> boxing. <laughs> they don't have to have it underground. Yeah, like, no, there's just like actually boxing nights that happen. <laughs> that sounds awesome. They they are really cool. They get a little intense when men and women are both there uh -huh. because men get all like, oh, the women. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. It's going to fall over when... That's that's part of the challenge. <gasps> you are evil, <laughs> <laughs> or just really good. <laughs> that that's true. Are you a big Jenga person? I enjoy Jenga. It's like it's a little bit stressful. Okay, big Jenga, Ooh, like on a table, uh -huh. is so stressful because you could get actually hurt. <laughs> like if that thing goes down, you better be getting out of the way. Uh huh. I've done it in Gosh, grass. That's more terrible. fun. I know it's really bad. I don't know how I made the last one work. Look at look at this. It's leaning backwards. Well, I think because this table isn't level. Oh, that that makes it way worse. That'll do it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, you know the key to Jenga, how they made it. I'm stalling here. How the, <laughs> the reason it works is because um, all the pieces like at the start they made all the pieces perfectly like uniform. Yeah. But then it wouldn't work, so they have to make like imperfections in the surface of the wood oh. so that the tension will change and, interesting and i heard that on some podcast that my dad was listening to that's cool many years ago this is super random now i get to participate in the joining random facts yeah, yeah the yeah, conversation yeah. um so if you cut yourself with a um like not intentionally <laughs> <laughs> if you accidentally cut yourself with a knife that is not serrated and is really really sharp the cut takes longer to heal because there's no like pieces of your skin to kind Whoa. of like layer with each other uh -huh. but if you have if you accidentally cut yourself with like a serrated knife it'll uh -huh. heal faster because there's there's more like skin to kind of layer with each other yeah yeah so that's my random fact of the day <laughs> wow i had I never thought of that. That's yeah. so cool. Mm -hmm. Now I'm going to steal that and use it in other. <laughs> I mean, is... don't quote me on that. I feel like my mom <laughs> told me that in like fifth grade. So I don't know where she got it from. <laughs> um, my family goes camping every um, <clears throat> every Halloween. This is going to be the end of me. Halloween? Yeah, Halloween weekend. That's fun. Oh, this is definitely, it's going down. It actually. might not. And then it might be really, I'm really bad. put it back. Wait, you can't do that. You yes, got to commit. Yes, I can. <gasps> oh Boom. my gosh <laughs> oh this is the hard part thank you lord go ahead i don't even know what to do divine providence um watch this oh my gosh come on oh no oh no oh. It's <laughs> <laughs> that's good pretty game. good good game good game <laughs>
Um, <clears throat> every Halloween weekend. You know what? You're going to talk while I clean these up real quick. Okay. You got anything give me something you to talk want. About. Um, anything. Any, uh, your experience with um, communicating with the, the non uh, WCC folk back at home during the summer and the winter. Interesting. Okay. Yes. Yeah. I actually have thoughts about that. So a pitfall that a lot of, I think generally a lot of college students, but specifically a lot of college students who are studying philosophy fall into is that they will think they know everything their freshman year and they'll go home and they'll be like, let me tell you why I'm d you're doing it wrong and why I'm right about everything. And this is what I learned in school. Um, so going home for a while was just like me trying to be like, let me tell you about philosophy and how interesting and right all of this is. And my parents and siblings being like, please stop. <laughs> so I had to go through a phase of being rather arrogant uh -huh. um, and puffed up. And then it got better. And mm. then I just had better conversations with people generally and kind of learned, oh, we're not supposed to just be... Um, kind of i think the i think the thing is to realize is that it's not always about being right it's about having a good conversation mm. um and a lot of that has to do with hearing the other person's perspective asking good questions and trying to arrive at some something better than where you started it doesn't mm -hmm. necessarily have to be you've completely changed their world view but if you can kind of help each other understand something better bring some kind of light to a subject that's where you're going to have good conversation. Um, so yeah, now I have better conversation and I try to just be a little more relaxed and less arrogant when I go home. <laughs> but yeah. But you still, um, still a little bit? Probably. I'm, <laughs> yep, I am human. Probably that is the case. <laughs> do, you're, um, do you have like nieces and nephews? No, I'm the oldest in my family. So ah. it's, except it's probably riding on my younger sister now. She's like about to, I feel like she's about to get engaged. Mm. And and then the pressure will be off my shoulders. Are you married? No. Engaged? No. Single, what are you waiting on? Single and ready to mingle. <laughs> <laughs> Is no. there not enough? <clears throat> there's not an, no good mingling people at 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 S, I say SJBA. Um, <laughs> WCC. Um, well, unless I were to date a student, which would be very weird for me oh, to do yeah, as a staff member. That makes sense. Yeah. Yeah, so so the, the options are limited. Um, yeah, and I don't think I'm ready for Catholic match yet. <laughs> Feels like a last resort. <laughs> well, yeah, that really reduces your options because, like, you, yeah. you you meet someone at Lander and you'll be like, now now. <laughs> Where do you go to school? And you're like uh, under the table. You're like, there's some directory that you're typing in their name to, to make sure they're not they're not a student. Yeah, I mean, I know all of the students. Thankfully, uh -huh. like even even as a staff member, it's it's still easy to know everybody because it's only like mm. 180 people. That's I I always forget that, and yeah. it, it seems like not that much because because even at Bosco, I didn't know everybody mostly because I didn't like talk to other people a very much antisocial um yeah yeah <laughs> uh, i was the same way like the introvert thing yeah i yeah. completely agree with that mm -hmm. um but and that that's that's something that the podcast helps with that's why i like yeah. doing it is because these because i don't you i'm not usually like people would circle up and make some like circles of conversation at bosco and i would be like i want to talk to one person yes. and have a really good conversation that is honestly like it's either for me now it's i've practiced so much in the seminar state that it's like i either want to be having an intellectual discussion with 15 people or uh -huh. coffee with one mm. like those those are the two those are the two options and mm. i have a really hard time with like party small talk where there's like six people joking about things uh -huh. i'm kind of like ooh, i don't know about that yeah um i'm sorry i'm still hyper focused okay at, at what point do do i need to like obviously we'll stop at thirty minutes, but mm -hmm. thirty minutes, that's the that's the time. Yeah, I okay. think that's fine. All right. We're already at seventeen. So we got thirteen minutes left. Sweet. Okay. Quick Let's math. Make it count. All right. Um, what's your biggest regret? Mm. Like in life or from WCC? No, in life. Oh. You gotta make it count. <laughs> <laughs> you you <laughs> you said it. I was actually very recently thinking about this. Really? Because I was um so this past weekend I actually went on a, a focus recruitment trip. 
Mm. Um, have you heard of Focus? I think it's been mentioned. Okay. Remind me. <clears throat> so it's the um, Fellowship of Catholic University Students. And they're essentially a group of missionaries that go to college campuses and evangelize. Mm. So I am looking into possibly leaving my position. Um, that's no secret. You're not the first to hear that, unfortunately. This isn't like you don't get to have the debut, the the breaking headline. Darn it. Um, And so I'm, I'm, you know, I'm looking at other options. So I went to a focus recruitment weekend to see if that was something I was interested in. And um, I was there was just a lot of time for prayer and mm -hmm. meditation. And so I was thinking about regrets. And I don't actually have a lot of regrets because I tend to think of things as being kind of in a very Augustinian way. If you've read Augustine's Confessions, no, um, you will. Not yet. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to say that about every single uh -huh, book that uh -huh. I mention. Um, but Augustine has a very, like, everything in his life was pointing to God. Mm -hmm. And he was always on the trajectory to, to become closer to God, even if he was at the time depraved. But God was using everything, everything. Um, so that's how I tend to look at things. Um, there was, what was I say, thinking, though, that I had a regret about? I don't know. It's hard to say because there, it really is like God is using everything for my greater good mm -hmm. and I don't have any real regrets. If anything, it's kind of like I wish that I had um, more fully participated in the life at WCC. Mm -hmm. So like if there had been times where I was like, oh, I don't really need to finish that reading or, oh, I'm too tired to do that. Um, I wish I had been a little bit more balanced and able to completely give myself mm -hmm. to um, what the school had to offer. And so there are times when I kind of missed out on things mm -hmm. and I don't want to like, or I don't want to encourage like the, like FOMO, like I, I think FOMO <laughs> silly in a lot uh -huh. of ways. Um, but I think that if I could have like, you know, field science, we were just talking about that. I wish I had been more dedicated to field science because now mm -hmm. I want to do it again. Um, so things like that. I think there are some things that I could have been more fully engaged with and present to, but was too worried about something else for that to happen. I've had this question for a while. Mm hmm how does your like uh phone network service provider work at wcc oh, gosh it's pretty bad <laughs> if we're gonna be honest like <laughs> the inconsistency of it's getting better actually mm -hmm. because we have a very a, a dedicated it guy now um and so it's essentially my understanding of it it's it's through our internet provider mm. and so it's like not a landline in the classical sense it's um Oh, wait, it's... hold on. So, like, right now, my family uses Verizon. Yeah. For, like, cell phones. Mm -hmm. But since you don't use cell phones most of the year. Yep. I don't want to pay for all that. Oh, yeah. Do you do that or do you just... I think my dad actually... Because I had... I had cell phone service through my parents for most of college. And uh -huh. I think my... There was a way we had Sprint... And I think there was actually a way to be like, we're not going to use this phone for this amount of months. Uh -huh. Can we like stop paying for it? And like, I think only you could pay do for that. What you use. Yeah, yeah. I think so. Yeah. Okay, cool. So you should be able to do that. <laughs> <laughs> I was just so curious about that every time. Yeah. Like, cause, um, I know like Android phones are different and I switched to iPhone mm -hmm. because blue, blue bubbles and FaceTime. FaceTime yeah. is a big, big deal. Um, is that an iPhone? Yeah. Mm -hmm. What, what kind? I think it's an 11. Mm. I got it actually. So my senior year, I went on an ice climbing trip, <laughs> uh, left my phone in the bathroom and we, you know, we're like getting back in the car and uh -huh. I'm like, oh wait, my phone, I think I left it in the bathroom. I go back in and it's gone. Someone stole it in like the five minutes that I left. <laughs> and I was like, you've got to be kidding me. So uh -huh. I didn't, I just didn't own a phone for the rest of senior year. Wow. Yeah, that was nice. That was nice. Mm -hmm. Um, because I didn't even have an option to like check it out or anything. Yeah. Um, but so then the um the school provides that. So it's not my oh. phone. It's it's my work phone. Cool. Yeah. So if you do quit, do they take it back? Yep. God. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm gonna have to start like providing for my own phone service. <laughs> well, that gives you an opportunity to buy the new one, the fourteen. I, I'm actually thinking about getting a light phone. Have you heard of that? Yes. Wait, wait. The one that uses like the e-ink display. Yep. So it, mm -hmm. those look pretty cool. The only reason that I'm hesitating is the GPS sounds like it sucks. It, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And and secondarily, I I do enjoy taking photos of things. Mm. Um, 
Well, that's why you got to get like a DSLR like that or like I a know. pocket camera or something. Yeah, I could. I mean, I have the film camera now, so I could just be really selective <laughs> and like only take photos be that super matter. Indie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Just go like full hipster. Uh-huh. Like, <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's that's what I I want to do because I love the tactile feel of like everything. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um and. And so I write a lot because mm-hmm. um, I, I do Substack. Do you know what that is? No. I don't. So it's, it's like a social media, but just for writing. Um, what? Yeah, yeah. So um, it's it's basically a blog thing, but for, for a bunch so of people. Cool. Yeah. Um, so I follow a very leftist political cartoonist. And so I, I see <laughs> something and I'm like, I don't understand this at all, but I know it's... it's but I know it's left. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, and then there, I, and then I, I put stuff on it. Um, mm-hmm. And that I write on the computer, but yeah. I, I write a lot on my typewriter, mm-hmm. um, which I love because like it's, it's awesome. Yeah, and you get the very like the clacking. Yes, it's so yeah. much fun. Um, and and so I have that for writing, the typewriter mm-hmm. for writing, and obviously I have to use my laptop for something. Yeah, yeah. Typewriter for writing, and then um, some sort of film camera for taking photos, mm-hmm. the camcorder for filming video, yeah, and um, the cassette player for listening to to music and stuff. Yeah. Um, and so I love having all those things separated because like mm. it's so it's so cool. Yeah, and it almost like you have to be more deliberate with your consumption of of media Uh at that point because you can't it's not just there Mm -hmm. and you can't just like access it without thinking about it it requires thought to actually engage with the different objects and there's like i don't know i I have such mixed feelings because it's like do i want more objects Uh in order to Mm -hmm. kind of like not be so attached to my phone um and it seems like yes but (laughs) it's it's i don't know it's something i'm still thinking about um for lent one year or a couple years ago I um I buried my phone in the woods for forty days. I put it in like a container. So it was okay, like good. I was like, oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. Um, but because I wanted to be dramatic with it, because you have to be dramatic yeah. with stuff like that. You can't yeah. just be like, I'm putting it in a drawer. No, I went out to the lake, oh my the gosh. Lake Lanier. That's like ten minutes. Yeah, yeah, walk, I saw that. And I buried it in in the ground. That's really, Um, that's also like very metaphorical. Yeah, 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 yeah. (laughs) I was thinking like, I'm going to go to WCC and I got to get super dramatic with things. Um, You you talked about books. Mm -hmm. Um, I, in in school at Bosco, I read Dante's Inferno, like all three actually, but we Mm -hmm. didn't do much of Paradiso because of just how weird it is. That's sad. Um, I really like Paradiso. Really? I, a lot of people don't. Okay, mm-hmm. what's interesting too is I actually reread Inferno and um, Purgatorio recently mm-hmm. within the last year. And when I hit Paradiso, I had a harder time with it the second time mm-hmm. around. I don't know if it's where I was mentally, but I really enjoyed it the first time I read it. Mm-hmm. Do Does it get easier to read really hard stuff like Plato and that kind of thing after you've been doing mm-hmm. it for so long? Yes and no. I think it depends on the kind of person you are. Mm -hmm. Um, Like I said, I've kind of always loved school and been more of an intellectual person. And so some of those things kind of came naturally. I think the way that you read starts to change. Mm. You stop kind of, you stop doing the like, because I think in school our our tendency is to read to retain specific facts. Mm -hmm. Like, oh, this character did this and this is the, the name of this ship. And like those are important on some level memory is important um but it's more thinking through ideas Mm -hmm. that you start to do and so you start to pick up more on themes and what is the author doing here and what can i get from this and what can this bring to the world Mm -hmm. as opposed to just like you know this was the 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 name of this ship or this is the name of the town that this character went to Mm -hmm. it's it's way more thematic and way Mm -hmm. more philosophical um and theological What's your favorite um, philosophical concept, like the ship of Theseus or Plato's allegory of the cave, that kind mm. of thing? Yeah. Gosh, that's a good question. I love both of those. Yeah. Ship mm-hmm. of Theseus is really interesting. I don't um, know if I know what that one is. Ooh. Okay. I totally learned it from WandaVision. So like, <laughs> it's it's not really. <laughs> okay. Um, okay. So there's a ship, right? Yeah. And um this guy named Theseus that's it's his ship Mm -hmm. (laughs) um Theseus ship yeah (laughs) and uh and so he he takes it along on a lot of adventures Mm -hmm. and then he like pieces break and he he keeps the broken pieces but he fixes the ship Mm -hmm. um and at a certain point 
every piece has been replaced. Oh, and so okay. is it. Mm-hmm. Is that the ship of Theseus still? Mm-hmm. And then if you take all the broken pieces and put them yeah. all together, is that ship the ship of Theseus? Yeah. Which mm-hmm. one is the ship of Theseus? Which yeah. one is the real one? Um, and my my family and I, this is this is gives you a context of where I'm coming into. It. We totally forgot about that. <laughs> um, but where where I'm coming to from yeah. to WCC, um, my family was talking in the car about. Do you know what Chat GPT is? No. So it's an AI program that you mm-hmm. give it a prompt and it'll like write an entire essay for you. Oh, okay. I know of things like that. Yeah. I didn't know the specific one. Yeah, yeah. And so our conversation in the car was first of all about how could that be demonic and be manipulated by demonic Interesting. stuff. Interesting. Um, I've never heard that, but that is fascinating. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. But then it got to the point where the question became um, how much of a piece of art can you put in before it's yours? Mm. Like how much of input can you have yeah or how little before mm-hmm. it's not yours anymore yeah before you didn't make it um but for the demonic thing mm-hmm. i or that's just how i tied ship of theseus into it like how much can something be something before it's not yeah uh, but um my thought process is, is no because mm-hmm. um like because the other example we used was the ouija board yeah and the demonic has a lot of location is very important. Mm -hmm. Like a house can be haunted by a demon or like a person Mm -hmm. um, or a a item. But the, the AI program uses like the cloud and different servers on different parts of the world. Mm -hmm. So it's really hard for it to, I, I mean, you I don't know. Can't the, pin it down. Yeah, I don't know the yeah. lore of demons, so I don't know. Yeah, if it's possible. I, that's fascinating. I feel like because there's like the whole like de- demonology. Essentially. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know almost nothing about it in part because like I don't want to. Um, <laughs> I, I leave that to exorcists, basically. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Um, but yeah, it seems like I kind of some of the reason I think that technology has become such an issue is because it progressed so rapidly, mm-hmm. and so it was almost like kind of kind of like the jurassic park quote where it's like you did you ever stop to think should i do this yeah so it just progressed so rapidly and advances Mm -hmm. were made so quickly that it's almost like we haven't been able to catch up to it Mm -hmm. and i feel like there's going to be there's going to continue to be a lot of things where we suddenly realize oh wait we've been doing this for years now and it happened so quickly that we haven't seen the cons- consequences of it until, mm-hmm. you know, 20, 30 years later. Yeah. I, I feel like stuff is going to, like that is going to happen. I don't know if it'll be demonic, but <laughs> it's just fascinating to think about yeah, technology yeah, yeah. as kind of like a vehicle for um, evil or for things that mm-hmm. are not good for humanity. Um, and obviously there is good and you can see it, but yeah, it's fascinating. All right. Well, um, we're... 30 minutes and 31 seconds sweet all so, right <laughs> yeah so uh thank you so much for being on the show yeah happy um to be here. yeah and uh good luck charlie <laughs> that's how i end every episode i forgot about that show <laughs> <laughs> yeah um <laughs>